G'day guys, Mark here, and welcome to the Iron Empire. Now in this episode, I'm finally gonna give you guys a full grand tour on my shed, but not before a big cleanup and one new addition. But stick around because at the end, I'm gonna show you exactly how much this thing cost me to build from the ground up. up in my shed today um, for the first time in a long time. Uh, haven't done much filming up here. We've been flat out with the, uh, with the shack reno and a little bit of car stuff. And my place up here in the hills has taken a little bit of a back seat. At the moment inside, it is looking terrible. There's just junk everywhere. The cars are all filthy. We've got flat tires. We've got mowers in the way. We've got wheels. We've got just junk that I haven't dealt with for a long time. And I had a spare day. I thought, nah, today's the day. I'm gonna do a massive cleanup, like something like I've never done in the last 12 months at least. So before I give you a good old tour of what is going on in here, we're gonna do a clean up. So we're just gonna do a bit of time lapse. We're just gonna clear this out, get everything out as much as I can out, start from the ground up, sort things out, throw a bunch of stuff away, I hope, and uh, just deal with this absolute shambles. So let's get stuck into it. We're gonna have a good clean up, and then after we're gonna do a full grand tour and I'm gonna give you a bit of a breakdown of what this thing owes me. guys so i've now spent a couple of days up here actually working on this shed just dealing with everything between the yard and inside cleaning throwing away organizing um and here we are i'm still not done i've got carried away i've decided that now is the time to get some things done that i've been wanting to do for a long long time so in preparation to get this little tirana which i'm planning to work on this week so we can get this down to the adelaide auto expo i thought now's the time to get this shed in tip-top shape so now, before we go any further, I'm gonna cut some holes in some walls so we can put some windows in. This has always been planned to be a window right here so I can take in the view that I paid for. So here we are, I'm gonna start cutting some holes. We're gonna get some windows in and then once I've finished up, clean all the cars, bring it all back in and then we're gonna do a grand tour on how I built this shed on my own, what it costs and what is gonna become, or what is the Iron Empire. That's what I'm talking about. Hell yeah, let that be light. Okay, so in true form, I forgot to hit record once again and the window was already in place. So then I just went ahead 
and finished off with some timber trims. I used some leftover bench tops that I use in the kitchen um, to trim off this window. I'll go ahead later on and cover up these screw holes and neaten it up. By the time this is covered in artwork and some posters and banners and stuff like that, it is going to look mint. Absolutely pumped with the result. Stoked with the view. So much more light in here now. I'll probably have to put a little blind here, otherwise I'll hook in here in summer. But yeah, that's going to be it for now because I've just got a blackout. We've got a tree down somewhere and we've got no power here. So I'm going to be back tomorrow for a final clean up and finish off this tour. Alright guys, so enough rooting around. We're here to talk sheds and we're going to start from the very beginning. Well, this is actually my property from the start. So going in here, we're in Adelaide Hills, Forreston, and basically I bought this bit of land after searching for years. Um, we're talking just under five acres and it was just rural property with nothing on it, not a skerrick. There was one big arsed gum tree, there's a windmill, and a broken down water trough. Apart from that is it, there was nothing else. So I started off with a porta potty, a pergola, I started doing a little bit of planting and then built up from there. So as I've progressed, I've put in a, a bit of a gravel driveway because it is slippery here in the winter. I started putting in a bit of lawn, some palm trees, some gardening to make this thing look nice and established. And from there on, it slowly progressed. Earlier episodes of the Iron Empire showed a hell of a lot of cars over in the paddock. We're talking nearly 20 cars at one stage. I've since cleaned up and uh, got rid of some cars, kept some, whatever, whatever, but now, I've got the shed so I can work here and store the good stuff. Unfortunately, there's still a few outside. So we've got the dusty here, hiding under cover until we want to get stuck into the bodywork. We've got the daily, we've got a parts falcon, and we also got a farm hack full drive that I bought down the road for a thousand bucks. Now to the shed, the good stuff. I bought this thing from a steel supplier out north and I got it for an absolute steal. So this place buys a lot of over orders, mismeasures, um, wrong colors, all that sort of stuff. So I bought it on the budget. So this thing is nine meters wide by 18 meters long, which equates to around 162 square meters, I think. Uh, we're talking a three meter wall. In the center, we're pushing nearly four meters. Um, and overall, I could have gone bigger, but I'm super happy with what I've got so far. Now I built this thing over a, probably a few months um, by hand. I had a little bit of help along the way, but overall it was just me hard yakka. I built this thing on the ground, stood everything up piece by piece, um, cladded it all, um, and then yeah, on it went. It was, it was a huge job, but totally worth it. I'm super pumped with the outcome. Um, it's still not finished like all my projects, but I can definitely operate from this thing. Now, I was lucky enough to score this in all one color, woodland gray. Usually they come in mismatched colors, you have to paint them. I still have to do a bit of trimming and painting and stuff anyway. All the roller doors are mismatched once again because they are all over orders, leftover stock. Um, so I ended up getting this shed complete with five roller doors in the color bond you see right now for $11,500. Now that is an absolute gift. And I don't think I'll be able to score a deal like that ever again. Now, moving inside, there's obviously a lot to take in, but we'll start with the floor. The next most expensive thing and the biggest thing was the concrete. We ended up with over 100 mil thick of concrete because I wanted to put in a hoist. Um, and it, this cost me $10,000 or nine. Shivers, nine or 10, can't remember. Let's just say 10. So overall, before we've even put the thing up, we're talking... Um, you know, we're talking 11 and a half grand and then 10 grand. So we're talking nearly 22K um, before I've done anything. But that's still pretty good outcome so far. From there, I went on and I two packed the floors. That probably cost me the best part of $1,000. I used two pack clear with a bunch of automotive paint. That's in a, a previous episode. And from there, continued on with the build. I started lining these walls using leftover sheeting from my mate's kitchen shop, uh, Grandview Kitchens. He gave me all the um, cover sheets and I have used insulation, then cover sheets, and I haven't finished, but we're getting there. The roof, I use a good quality insulation on that as well, and it keeps so much summer sun out, totally well worth it. I've got a feeling the, the insulation, um, maybe about $2,000 I've spent so far, maybe not even quite. Um, I'm gonna lose track of the costings, but where are we? We are nearly 25 grand. From there, we're up to lighting. Um, I haven't even finished doing the lighting, doing it all myself. 
I had a mate, Daniel, do the electrical install. It's three phase power here. So running the cable with all the power box and lighting and stuff, I've totally lost track of that. But I'm gonna say the fact that I've done most of the work myself, um, bit of trenching, I'm probably in at a couple grand in uh, electrical there. And then moving on to this little room here, this corner, it's a three by three meter room. I've probably spent another two or three building this room. So I had somewhere to cook, clean, tidy up, wash up, all that sort of stuff. So going in here, we got the kitchen. Um, uh, you know, we're talking budget stuff. So the same friend built my cabinets. I can't even remember what he charged me for that. Leftover cover sheets. Everything is budget DIY. Cheap bench tops and bunnings. Um, I've done a splash back myself, second hand fridge. Um, built my own shower, scratch shower screen, glass I've had for years. Uh, I've got an RV style toilet here. Um, window was given to me. Look, I'm totally gonna lose track of all the costings, but realistically everything in there is probably another five grand. So we're getting close to 30K already. Um, but that is the bulk of it. From there, I continued on adding more creature comforts like the fireplace and yeah, you know, i got the TV and that sort of stuff in here. This is just so I've got somewhere to chill out throughout the day. I don't stay here because this is not my residence, but it will one day be. Super excited for that to happen. But moving on to the inside, obviously I've done a bit of a clean up. I've now re-filthied this place. I've got a bunch of Raceworks parts that we're throwing at this little Tirana in preparation for this week's Auto Expo. And so that's why this car is parked in on the angle, ready for filming. And uh, yeah, moving along, we've got a little rider mower, absolutely essential for five acres worth of work um, with the fair lane here and a BF Tornado, which we'll talk about another day. Now out here, we've got the back roller door. I wanted this so we could take in those views and also leave a in and out sort of access. So if I wanted to bring a car in on a car trail, I could drive straight in um, or I could have a ramp going out. I don't know, I was sort of thinking of potential in the future and um yeah i haven't sort of finished out here there's a lot of retaining to do and uh still work to be done but plenty of time i've got until i'm dead next up next most important thing in any shed is obviously benches everything in this place i will stress everything is repurposed diy absolute budget i don't buy nothing new well, I'll buy a few things new, but not much. So once again, cover sheets from the joinery. If you are looking to build benches, walls, anything, go to the local joinery. Any joinery is going to have cover sheets that are not to be used for their jobs. And a lot of the time they get that many, they want to get rid of them. But even if they charge you, it's going to be absolute scraps in comparison to new stuff. So I've doubled up on my sheets here and I've got a bench here. This is meant to be the charging corner. So I've got batteries, um, battery charges on drills, charges, lots sort of stuff. And also underneath we've got the... Um, scrap oil uh, and jacking and sort of stand apparatus. Um, got a personal access door to out there, which will in the future be another little lean-to. Moving through, we got some benches. These are all just cheap stuff from uh, Paramount Browns, but I've used them as a permanent fixture, screw them to the walls, and they're actually super solid. I do need to double up on the bench top, so I've got a bit more stability when I'm belting around heavy objects. Um, but yeah, overall, that have been pretty good. This is the proper way to install the vise. Take note, people. Every bay has got its own little bench and light area. So the plan was if I've got a car parked in here, I've got a bench, I've got tools, and I can work on the car without having to run around all over the shed. So although this is the first bench that I've put in here, um, it's sort of still the, the messy bench. But moving across, we've got sort of more the paint bench. So this is all my paint supplies in here. Um, put the window in uh, yesterday, super stoked on that. Absolutely love taking that view. Uh, engines under here, got my 440 big block just waiting to go in the Dodge Phoenix. Absolute idiot. I've got a 500 plus big block sitting there. No car to put it in. I've got to get my ass into gear with that one. Got a Cleveland, motor parts, cross flow, um, 318 Chrysler under there as well. And then moving along, we've got the race work section of all parts. Underneath is just more storage, that's more household stuff. Um, I got myself a uh, ultrasonic cleaner. My dad wanted to get one of these for years. We finally got one, uh, super handy to clean up stuff. Um, so that's that's an addition to the workshop as well. We're starting to deck it out with some banners. We've got the Raceworks, we've got tough mounts, Mopar, more tough mounts over here. 
Um, there's old, there's a bit of driving with Dixon up on the wall there. Old posters I designed back in the day for the Datsun shows and Iron Empire stuff around the place. Um, but yeah, there's there's a lot to go on here. I really want to deck this out completely with um, artwork and stuff, but it's all time and money. This is the cleaning cupboard. So once again, another cupboard. I think this is a Paramount Brown scenario. Um, I'm talking to get some birds in here. This is all cleaning stuff. This, a lot of cleaning stuff will soon go in this side. I want to have some more cabinetry through here and a bit of a clean up spot with a sink and a parts washer and all that sort of stuff. So all cleaning will be there um, where the wheels currently are. If anyone's keen on some wheels, this is the range that we have available. And you can uh, you can contact me if you are interested at mark at the empire.com.au in the description below or right here on the screen. Now back into this area, we are, this will be the workshop area once I get rid of all this stuff and the house is built. Um, we're going to have, this is all going kind to of come become big benches. I'm going to put another window in over here and anytime I'm doing work on stuff, it's going to be in here. And um, yeah, that was the plan. So two bays will be left for just workshop and then four bays for vehicles. I do have some exciting things in the works as well for some new uh, tooling and machinery that will make life much easier for working on cars, as in they're no longer going to be on the ground. But we'll talk about that when the day comes. I also have an aircon. Um, my cousin Shane is an aircon installer and we've got a secondhand evaporative. Um, I'm yet to run some ducts, but that realistically does, you can feel it everywhere in the shed. That keeps it so cool in here, even in super hot days. Um, it's definitely, definitely uh, manageable to work in here. So absolutely stoked with the extra work I've put in to try and keep this place comfortable for working because realistically, if you ain't comfortable, you're not going to be productive. Also, um, in addition to the fireplace, I can't remember who I've spoken about that, but yeah, got the um, old school fireplace here. It does the job, but it is hard to keep a building this size warm so i have added some overhead um heat bars i can't remember what they're called inverter something can't remember um but these things are apparently super cheap to run um and i have one for every bay so i've got to put a few more in but they have been amazing for the winter now going outside here this is the most important part of this whole property and it's the view I spent up to try and buy a place that I wanted with the surroundings uh, the Adelaide Hills absolute beautiful place and um, I get to enjoy it looking at the shed every day so um, I recently I think this year I built this deck once again all recycled except for the top the decking is brand new but all the um, all the tops was just like leftover parts that I've accumulated over the years of you know, structural pine and uh, posts and stuff like that. So I built that up. I've got a little seat there yet to finish, but uh, just got to put it back on it. Started doing a bit of retaining and a few paths, a bit of a garden bed area. Um, I wanted to make this place look nice and um, it's all time, but uh, I'm really, really happy with how it's coming out. Now over here is the non-finished side and also my um, sort of material side. So I've got heaps of blocks so I can continue on with my retaining and uh, timber and pipe work and cladding and sheeting and all that sort of stuff. I've got plenty of rainwater here. These are chocolate block four, got 50,000 litres at the moment. Um, it's plenty to live off, but probably not quite enough to water. I would like everything to be green. Obviously it's green at the moment because we're in spring, but it does dry off in the summer, obviously. Now over here is going to be where the house will be. The container is going to be getting moved. And I'm going to have a home getting built there. Or well, I'm sort of doing a owner build. Um, no joke, DIY, everything. Um, so their plans are in work for that right now. So that hopefully shouldn't be too far off. It's going to take a couple of years to build, but we'll get started pretty soon. Now, my property goes right down to the bottom fence, uh, totaling just under five acres. Um, the hole that you see there is now under the shed. All the dirt got shifted from there to there. We ended up moving something stupid like 80 ton or something. Um, that was another cost. I think it, we moved all that. It was probably 1500 bucks or something like that. Um, so overall, to be honest with you, I've lost track of the costing of this thing. But I would say 
it's probably in the vicinity of 30 to 40 grand I'm sitting on here. And although everything is mismatched, all the windows and stuff, I've got to paint everything to make it all match and I've got to finish stuff off. But let's be real, if anyone's priced up the cost of a shed, let's say 40 grand is, um, I don't know, it's, I feel like I've done pretty well. Um, you know, if I have my time again, I had to build this thing my own. I had to build this thing on my own. I had didn't have the choice because um, it was just the fact that I didn't have the money. But if I had my time again, I'd probably get someone to put the shed up. That'd smash up in a week. But overall, I'm still glad that I did. Um, massive learning curve, and um, yeah, I wouldn't have it done. I wouldn't have had it done otherwise. Um, I did leave the shed overhang a little bit more, so I had a bit more coverage from the rain. Once again, haven't finished it, but it'll it'll be there. I've got. I'm glad I've done that little overhang there as well. Uh, another personal access door and I fenced off this area to keep Judge in when I go to the shop and get some lunch. Now I've been doing way too much talking. I hate listening to myself talk. It sucks, but hopefully you guys have um, got something out of this. I hope you guys, you can tell me what I've done wrong. I don't care. I know there's so much shit that's not done right, but um, or, or finished and all that sort of stuff. But at the end of the day, I'm doing my best and I'm getting there. So hopefully you guys take something out of it. Um, I've got a big, big burly compressor out here. Um, that's the sort of the, the, the don't look outside because there's still shit everywhere. But um, something, I just seen something. I've got to show you guys this. I found this, I can't remember where this come from, but I bought this old school golden fleece fuel tank. Absolutely so cool. Golden fleece, uh, an Australian icon went out in the early 80s um this is an old diesel tank but i'm actually going to get the local fuel guy to fill this up with premium um so i can fill up my own cars at home absolutely pumped on that and i do have an old bowser as well this is a bp bowser but i'll change that to golden fleece so i can make up my own little service station and charge myself stupid money for petrol really excited to get that done but once again it's all time if i had all the time in the world it'd be finished but it's all a part of the fun so yeah absolutely pumped on this place really happy love to be up here and uh now that i've done a clean up um i'm really excited to get back here and, and get stuck into it again um any locals that are into earthworks i actually need a little bit of earthwork stuff done but i'm after someone with a pretty big excavator we're talking like 15 20 tonner um if you watch the channel um want a bit of work hit me up um, yeah, that's going to be it for the wrap on the, the Iron Empire. This is the Iron Empire. This is the, uh, the place that started it all. And, um, hopefully we'll continue on to get many more good years out of this place. But, um, yeah, thanks for coming to check out the shed. Um, that's it. I didn't keep it exact tabs on what we spent, but hopefully you guys get the gist of it. Super excited, super happy with the place. And, um, yeah, super excited to get stuck back in and we get a few more projects out this door. Thanks for coming back, guys. Thanks for checking out the channel. If you haven't already, like, subscribe, leave a comment. Let me know what you reckon. Check out the online store, pick up some Mind Empire merch, and I'll see you all on an upcoming episode. Cheers, guys.